I bet every anime only watching this episode was probably thinking this. Does my eyes deceive me? Do I see a female character falling in love with another character that isn't Kirito? I know for a fact. Everybody's surprised. If you have not read the light novel or you were not spoiled, you were probably surprised to see that because... Let's face it, Kirito kind of has a harem situation. The man, every time he encounters a female character, they obviously always want to go after him. Even if he is obviously with Asuna and he's going to be with her, we have a lot of female characters that join the main cast of characters that are ob obviously always going to get shafted and never be with Kirito, but like I said, they join his harem. And it's just, it's refreshing to see a female character that's just not, you know, wanting to be with Kirito and actually falling in love with someone else, which is Yujiro. It really just concretes the fact that Yujiro is not just a, you know, throwaway character. He's not a character that is just here to be here and that's it. He clearly is an MC that's very important to this arc, and that is clearly what the writer is trying to prove in this moment, that yes, Kirito's not the only one that's actually getting romantic interest, other people are, which, once again, we see that towards the end. So, just, like I said, refreshing. I love that, and I think many anime onlys are just gonna be very shocked, like, is this, is this even SAO anymore? Kirito's getting character development. Kirito, you know, showing emotions and stuff. Kirito is, you know, not unstoppable and godlike. All these things with the plot, you know, armor and stuff is finally getting explained to the whole situation now with, you know, his friend Yujiro actually getting a girl after him and said, Kirito's stealing it. It's just, it's great to see, and I, I just think many are really gonna start falling in love with this series even more, getting to see what SEO truly is instead of the shallow husk it was in the first season and some parts of season two. So getting into the main concept of this episode, the a system with authority or the taboo index and nobility. So the nobles obviously are scumbags and it's a common trait you see in a lot of series, not just anime, not just manga, but just in shows in general and writing it's always been a common theme to see nobles, you know, using their authority to their advantage and taking it out on people that really can't do anything against it. It's it's so common, it's a normal thing, it's cliche at this point. But does that mean it's a bad thing? Not really, it comes down to execution. Now, I do want to admit that the two people in question that are causing all these problems for Kirito and Yujiro, they, yes, are not technically the best villains, most well-written villains, but their main purpose is just to dive into how the Taboo Index really works and how NPCs in this world can get away with certain things and not get away with others. That's what this was mainly about within this episode. What these two characters are really trying to show is that what people can get away with, even if they're not necessarily breaking the law. So, let's dive into that. So... We've seen since the very beginning, Kirito's been going out of his way, basically breaking the taboo index, but not breaking it. Like, he's just kind of bending the law a little bit to be able to do what he wants. Maybe sleeping in, or being able to train with a sword, or whatever, on a day of rest, you know, just practicing, or whatever. Basically, Kirito has found many ways to go around the taboo index, and this is something we've seen consistently since the first episode. And now we're getting to see it's not just Kirito that is falling in line with something like that, but a bunch of other characters are doing that as well. For instance, we have, you know, recently, the dude that Kirito really made upset the first seat, he even stated when he first met Kirito, he's like, hey, you know, I constantly try to find excuses to be able to use my sword as well. So it's clear as day that it's not just Kirito that's trying to break the taboo index in their own way. As long as if it's not necessarily against the rules, they'll try to bend it. And that's what happened here. The nobles have a little bit more authority than the common citizen. And on top of that, with the way the taboo index is, it doesn't cover every single little deed. It doesn't cover every moral thing in the world or in existence. And so, obviously, if it's not in the taboo index, then they can do whatever they want. And that's pretty much what's happening here, is that they were exercising their authority as nobles against people underneath them, and they can't do anything. They can't fight back against it, because if they were, they would get in even more trouble and break 
the taboo index so they just don't want none of that so yeah it's the interesting part of what this episode is trying to show is that this world is very complicated and it kind of falls into how society is in general like it's something that happens in everyday life you cannot tell me that is not the truth you have to there's people in you know our world right now that obviously have more authority than others and they're able to get away with things that the normal common folk like us are not able to really get away with because they either have more money connections whatever and that's the big point here what this episode is trying to show it's kind of relatable how you can relate it to real life but it also just shows once again the problem within this world and how even though they're not necessarily let's say stealing from each other they can do other things for instance what we saw how they messed with Kirito's property they messed with it destroyed it and that's how they got away with it but it was because they were nobles they were able to do something like that so yeah and there's also other ways to kind of get around the entire system of you know actually not killing someone see within this series it's also stated that you know the one hit system that we saw when Kirito was having his match with the first seat there is a system within this that even if it's one hit that means that you're technically allowed to get one hit so if you're able to let's say one shot someone with your first hit if you kill them you're still not at fault you didn't break any rules because you both agreed to it as a mutual agreement so technically Kirito could have died in that moment or anyone could have died in that moment so there is ways to go around the taboo index and break it but it still falls in line with it because of certain rules that are in place but yeah, that's the main purpose of what this episode is trying to show. Just showing that these nobles, they're scumbags, yes, they're not the best villains of all time, but they're able to manipulate things to do what they want, which is kind of set up for things to expect in the future, seeing characters work around these rules to get what they want. And so you could probably see maybe other characters like yuji and all that probably figuring stuff like this out to be able to get away, uh, away with other things that are obviously wrong. Now, but stopping that for a moment, I do want to talk about the fact that the episode that I have personally been waiting on to see animated is coming up next week. I'm not going to give any spoilers, not going to dive into any major details of it, but it's going to be a very big episode next week for SAO Season 3. And I'm really curious to see how they're going to handle it because it's it's got some content within it that, honestly, we really haven't seen before an SAO, like to that extent that was in the light novel. I don't know if they're going to censor it or, or what they're going to do. I'm really curious to see what's going to technically happen, but the upcoming episode of SAO is going to be pretty freaking epic. Probably the best episode yet, depending on how it's handled, and I think many anime onlys better strap yourselves in. It's going to be very enjoyable, and I am personally looking forward to it. But getting on to the main topic, Basically, within this episode, though, we also get to see the weight of these nobles. For instance, the two nobles have been terrorizing Yu-Gi-Oh! and Kirito. We get to see kind of how, once again, the incarnation system and the ability to basically have your imagination or focus something like the weight behind your sword, how much it matters. And when you saw that power rising up when Yu-Gi-Oh! was clashing with the nobles, what that was signifying is that, yes, even the scummiest of scum and the weakest of weak can also have great power behind them if they truly believe in certain things like their imagination to their, you know, incarnation and all that, the resolve to want something, they believed in their absolute authority. They believed in their noble self to be able to put down Yu-Gi-Oh. Obviously, he did overpower them, but the point was is that Yu-Gi-Oh you know, was having a hard time against two nobles that obviously really aren't that strong. So you gotta imagine someone that has an iron will, someone that really believes in themselves, have, has this, like, certain morals about them, they're probably able to do some crazy stuff, and that's what we saw here within this episode. Another example that anyone can use the system that Kirito has technically been using since the start of the series. It's not just him, it's not just Yujiro, it's not just, you know, the main characters of this story, it's even throwaway characters like these two nobles that are just jerks entirely. So is there anything else really to talk about? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think there really is. It's a pretty good episode, a lot of setup. I mean, we have the whole situation with Kirito basically being the calm one in this episode, trying to calm down Yuji and making sure he doesn't freak out or get into any trouble. But overall, it's a pretty good episode. It clarifies a lot of things. It has a good setup for the events to come, and I think many are going to be able to appreciate these little elements that this episode is doing with the whole stuff with Yuji and how he has a romantic interest, to, you know, how Kirito is remaining cool, or, you know, how the nobles are acting and stuff, or how the world works. I think many are going to be able to appreciate what the series is about. So, I think I'm going to end it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, 
please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. Because for some reason, even if you click the subscribe button, you don't always get notified for whenever a video is uploaded. So if you want to be notified, click that bell icon down below. And this doesn't just go for me. It goes for every single YouTuber on the platform. So even if you don't care about my content or you don't care to watch it, whatever, at the very least, go out of your way and click the bell icon for the YouTubers you do care about because it does help them out because, like I said, you pretty much have to double subscribe. But I love you guys. Be safe. Chibi out.